Hi everybody, welcome back to our channel. I am Lindsay, the fantasy fan. And I'm Danielle, your resident romantic, and we are friends. Till the book ends, and today we have a long-awaited video, <laughs> a long time coming. We are doing a book haul. Yay! So, uh, these are books that we have acquired, you know, in the past, like, month or so, um, from, like, around Christmas until now. Uh, we have, I have a lot. Mm -hmm. I have a spending problem. There's no other way to put it. Notice how she goes from we have to I have a lot. <laughs> Danielle can like rein herself in. But I've really gotten into the terrible habit of consumerism this past couple weeks. Uh, and I've been to Barnes Nobles a lot because I've been very bored. And I've been ordering things online. <laughs> and essentially just like I forgot I ordered some stuff and it showed up at my door. And I was like, oh, a present from me to me. So that's where we're at. As far as synopsis go... It's going to be short for a couple mm -hmm. of reasons. Firstly, there are too many. We would be here for three hours if Absolutely. we were to go through in-depth synopses. Secondly, um, I don't know about Danielle, but I don't really know what half my books are about. Nope. Sometimes they're cover buys. I don't like that shiny, and you know how I feel about the shiny covers. Um, or, you know, they, I, they've had good reviews, so I will just pick them up Absolutely. on other people. I know you do. For me, yes. I'm not going to remember the synopses <laughs> because I'll buy them a month ago mm -hmm. and I'll like specifically wait because I have to get through some of the old books mm -hmm. and then by the time I get to them, I'm like, what were you about again? <laughs> you? you have some kind of heart on the cover. So obviously it's about love, but what else? <laughs> yeah. So don't come here expecting us to know everything <laughs> about these books, but we hope you enjoy this video. Uh, so without further ado, uh, uh, let's get cracking. So you're gonna hear me just a, a smidgen more than Danielle, just because I have yes. a lot more. But I will be I will be fast um, as far as my synopsis. Yes. Mostly because I feel like Lindsay, let me know if I'm talking wrong. But the way that I book shop is typically I will save up money, and then twice a year I will go on mm -hmm. huge book shopping sprees. I'll have like literally an entire mm -hmm. stack in my hands. Lindsay knows she's yeah. been through the war zone with me. <laughs> Lindsay, you kind of just buy whenever you feel like. Yes, yes. Right? Yes. So I that's why she's that. going to have slightly more than me because I have not done a shopping, a huge shopping spree in probably at least three months. Mm -hmm. Probably a little bit before we started this channel. So I'm going to be due soon in a month or two. <laughs> we'll do another haul back. Yes. <laughs> yes. The first book that I have to chat about is Ghosted by Rosie Walsh. Honestly, this was kind of a cover by. I really like the way I it looks. I do like the cover. It it's looks so pretty. pretty. Um, so what I can gather from the back of this is that it's about a girl who meets a boy and they fall in love and they're like deeply and instantly connected. <laughs> um, but Eddie goes on a long booked vacation. Like he's booked this like months in advance and he promises to call, but then he never calls and everybody thinks that he ghosted her and that he just was like tired of having her in his life. So he just like dipped out. But the girl, Sarah thinks that something more sinister is happening. So she decides that she's going to track him down. Oh. So I think it's a thriller, like a domestic thriller, but I don't really know. So we shall see. It sounds good. I'm curious about it. So the next book that I have to chat about is maybe one of my favorite covers ever. It's to sleep in a sea of stars by Christopher Paolini. Just Look at it. It's I am very attracted to that cover. It's gorgeous. <laughs> she just is real cute. Um, as far as a synopsis goes, there I is don't none on the one. back. <laughs> um, there's one in the flap. But it says space holds countless secrets. She just found the deadliest one. I don't know too much about it. I know that it's about a girl who goes into space and finds something sinister. Uh, obviously Christopher Paolini wrote the Aragon series, so this is the first mm -hmm. book that he's written outside of this world, and I believe it's gotten mixed reviews, but it's, she's a chunker, so I'm gonna- She's got a lot of pages in there. She does have a lot of pages, and my goal this year was to get more into sci-fi, so I'm kind of hoping that this one sparks some joy. <laughs> That's the kind of cover where I know I'm not going to like the story at all, but I'm going to read it anyway <laughs> Yeah, I like that so cover. Pretty. That is how pretty it is. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> uh, so this is a book, uh, The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evil in Hardcastle. I've already read this book. Um, I loved it. I gave it a five out of five stars. Wow. And yeah, this is a book that stuck with me, but I listened to it on audiobook and I wanted to have a physical copy because I loved it. Um, so we're just following a dude essentially that wakes up every day in a different body and by the end of I think it's 10 days he has to figure out who murders evil in Hardcastle in order to kind of break the cycle of him being waking up in different bodies and he doesn't have any memory of who he is. Um, and this was so good. 
so good. It takes a really weird twist at the end that I didn't see coming. And not to brag, but I usually see the twist coming <laughs> in a lot of these kinds of books. So I was like, I was like, this one came out of left field and slapped me. <laughs> so I was like, I need it. So the next book I have is Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson. I mean, this cover. She's it also is a nice stunning. cover. Love the yellow. This book has gotten a lot of hype recently. And essentially we're following a girl who the first scene she wakes up with blood on her hands and zero memory of the previous night and no one has more questions than she does and she kind of wakes up next to a dead body and this then is suspicious well that's the first i think the first chapter and then from there you start at the beginning to figure out how you the girl got to where she is but it's following this girl who i think becomes entrenched in like the music industry and she's like a young girl and i think it's a commentary on like how older people in the music industry take advantage of younger, uh, especially female, black female artists. So I'm mm -hmm. really looking forward to this book because it has been hyped. Good. So the next book is The Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. Um, I read this book in eighth grade, which in hindsight, I was way too young to be reading things like this in eighth grade because there were some sexy scenes in here. <laughs> um, but it's fine because it's about a vampire and a witch. And I was like, you know, that was like the height of Twilight. So I was like, yeah, I'm a hoe for anything that has to do with vampires. Yeah, you stick with your other books. I'm just going to take this. <laughs> Thank you. It's actually a TV show, too. Really? Yeah, I really want to get it, but it's on Sundance, which means that I have to pay for it. Oh. But I probably will, because <laughs> I've recently seen, like, a resurgence of this on booktube where people have been like reading it and being like this is actually really good because it came out forever ago but essentially we're following this woman named diana and she is like an oxford scholar and she's doing research in oxford's library and this book just like comes out of the reference shelf and nobody's seen it and nobody knows what it is and like a dumb dumb she like gets it and she looks at it but then she gives it back to the library and then it turns out this was it was like a really famous like important book that had been lost forever <laughs> There's magic in this. Um, and so then she's like, well, I got to find this book now. And so she gets teams up with Matthew, who is a vampire, who has a keen interest in the book. Mm -hmm. And it um, is a mesmerizing and addictive tale of passion and obsession that reveals the closely guarded secrets of an enchanted world. Yeah, I'm going to be borrowing that. Yes. Please, <laughs> thank you. Woo, book clip book. We could, we could read the book and watch the show. Hey, all right. We just hey. found out our next movie marathon one. We'd have to pay for the show, though. That's all right. I think it's like $5. We are broke. Please sponsor us to watch that. <laughs> yes, AMC Sundance. <laughs> You're listening. <laughs> okay, so some of the ones that I have on my book haul. I recently bought some very chunky, very gilded edged books. Ooh, shiny. This one is The Arabian Nights, translated by Sir Richard Burton. And this one is a compilation of four novels by Jane Austen. You will appreciate that. Please ignore the stickers. I haven't taken them off yet. <laughs> so this one includes Sense and Sensibility, Pride and Prejudice, Emma, and Northanger Abbey, if I said that right. Um, I got these two. First of all, I've never had a Gilded Edged book, and I think they're so fancy. Now? I do. I feel very fancy. Hello, I am a British scholar from yes. the 1800s. That is what I feel like. Yes. Um, but wow. I also got them because, like, I know that they are very important um, pieces of literature for our culture, for a lot of everyone's culture. And for whatever reason, I never read them in middle school, high school. Uh, for whatever reason, my high school focused a lot on Shakespeare and never a lot on anything else. Which, I'm not against Shakespeare. I know how you feel. I'm not against <laughs> Shakespeare. I just, I want to have more of a cultured background when it comes to these older literatures. So, I got both of them. They are so pretty. I'm so excited for them. I also got The Lovely War by Julie Berry. This was a book that was <coughs> roughly politely persuaded <laughs> by this one here. I don't remember a whole lot. It has has to do with a couple of people. There is love involved. I believe it is ancient London or classical London. There's also something that has to do with Aphrodite in here. Yeah, yes. she like narrates it. Right. So it is narrated by the goddess Aphrodite. Um, I'm not going to give too much of a synopsis because I don't remember. But she suggested it. There's love. I enjoy it. The next one I have is Hunger. It is a compilation. It's chunky. It's a compilation of three different stories written by Eve Langlace, Kate Douglas, and A.C. Arthur. So it is a compilation book. I believe they are adult romances. Um, I don't remember too much. I think it has to do with like wolves. It looks Maybe paranormal. vampire. Right. Paranormal. So paranormal adult romances I am super excited for. There's one called The Alpha's Mate, Dangerous Passions, and Bound to the Wolf. It sounds like sexy time. 
Yeah, I was trying to be nice about it, but it sounds like sexy time. So, uh, not just one, but three of them. Wow. So, I am hungry for this book. Oh. Two more recent ones. Both of them were roughly politely recommended (laughs) by someone over here. It is The Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass and The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. I have steered clear of this because it keeps getting hyped up all over the place, and I'm afraid I'm going to be influenced by everyone's reviews and not like it. I just reread the second book of the series, and it's epic. I also know that there are still more books coming out in these series, and if I can avoid it, I try not to start it until almost all of the books are out. She's going to be writing for years. Oh, heaven. But, like, the first, like, the th- first um, trilogy is, like, complete. It's, like, a second trilogy within the series. Okay. Within the world. So the first trilogy right. is complete. So. Well, that's fine then. Um, so you should read it soon because so, it's epic. Maybe it'll show up on my February TBR. <laughs> but I got this because she recommended it and I figured it has been long enough. I will give it a try. I also picked up The Cruel Prince, A, because she recommended it. B, because I read another book by Holly Black. I believe it was The Coldest Girl in Cold Town. Oh, yeah. So I really enjoyed that one. Um, this is a series, again, I wanted to wait until all of the books had come out. Um... It looks like they are. Yeah. It looks like they are, so I'm excited for that one. So the next book that I pick up is The Martian by Andy Weir. This is also a sci-fi, and I think it's about a dude who goes to Mars, and he's one of the first people Mm -hmm. on Mars, and something goes wrong, and I heard this was, like, actually kind of, like, humorous. Oh. I don't know. It doesn't sound humorous, because I think it's about, like, dying in space, but I... (laughs) I've heard really excellent things. It's obviously a movie with Matt Damon. I was going to say, now a major motion picture. It or is. it has been for a and while. it's orange. And it's just like the cover call to me. Um, then I got An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. Uh, I finally picked up this book because much like you, I hate reading and starting series where it's not complete or it's not going to be complete anytime soon. Mm-hmm. And Saba Tahir finished this series, I believe, this past December. So it just came out. Um, and I actually read this first book years ago like when I was in high school and I remember liking it but I truly remember actually nothing about the plot so I think it's about it's a Roman inspired fantasy but with like brown main characters so I have heard really excellent things and everybody was like sobbing at the fourth book so I'm like (laughs) great I have heartache to look forward to but I willingly give myself to it and you don't usually do that. No. You like to read sad books. <laughs> I know like you sad don't. Things. I'm reading a very sad historical World War II oh. right now, and it had me crying in the car twice yesterday. Oh. But it's fine. Um, and then I picked up Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare. Um, I've already read this book, but I didn't own a physical copy, and Chain of Iron is coming out um, in, I think, March something. And it's just really pretty, and I wanted to own it because I really enjoyed it, and I know... It was crinkly. It came crinkled a little bit, but it's fine. I'm not going to freak out about it. (laughs) Lindsay's like, I'm not going to freak out. I'm not going to freak out. Inside, she's like, oh my god. I will sue Barnes and Nobles. Um, So, yeah, I'm really, you know, I just like to have a matching pair, and I really like the second cover. Everybody doesn't like the second cover, but I was like, I think it's kind of pretty. It's got bees on it. Then I picked up The 10,000 Doors of January. Uh, I don't really know what this one's about, but it is about a girl who is a ward of a wealthy dude. And she finds a strange book, one that tells the tale of a secret door of love, adventure, and danger. And for the first time, January realized she can escape her story and sneak into someone else's. I love the cover. I hate the deckled edges. Oh, that was a lot of vehement hate in one word. I feel them. Why do you hate them? I don't like it. It kind of just makes my textures, like, uh, radar go like, ding, ding, no, no. So, uh, I do love the cover. I've heard really good things. And Alexi Harrow wrote... The Once in Future Witches, which I actually have on audiobook, and so I need to read that, but I was like, well, I'll pick up both of her works without reading either of them. <laughs> which is unusual for you. you usually, good habits. You usually like to only buy books if you know you like them, so this is unusual. It is, it is, and plus it had deckled edges, so that's a no. Mm-hmm. It's fine. I looked past that. Um, so then I have Shadow of the Fox by Julie Kagawa. Um, she wrote the Iron Face series, which I think yes. you liked. I am in love with the Iron Face series. And I never read it. Um, but I think this is a, I want to say this is a Japanese inspired fantasy about something. <laughs> it's, she's a book half, of, it's a book about something. It's a book about something. Just it's about clear. a girl who's half kitsune, half human, and she has a skill with illusion. 
Um, but I've heard really good things about it. Um, I think Elliot Brooks, uh, who's a booktuber, I think she really liked it. And I really like the cover, and I got it for Christmas from my mom. So thanks, mom. Um, You're welcome, dear. <laughs> Thank you, mother. You're welcome. Mother dearest. Um, so I have a monster called by Patrick Ness, and this is the illustrated version. And I'm Ooh. so happy I found this at my secondhand bookstore, and it's in, like, perfect condition. Because I had actually wanted to read this, but I wanted the illustrated version. And I, this is also a sad book. It's going to be sad girl times. Mm. Um, but I think it's about how, like, children deal with grief and losing a parent and things like that. Um, and I've heard nothing but fantastic things about it, so I wanted to cry. Um, then I have The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon. Um, I think this might have come from England because, is that a pound sign? That is a pound sign. I don't know how. <laughs> this was also from my local used bookstore. It's in perfect condition. I don't even think it's been read. But it may have traveled from across the pond. Do you mind if I say real quick? <laughs> yeah. Because I had a book where the back... Yeah, it's from Oh England. my gosh, some British bloke <laughs> left this at the store and I picked it up. I had another book like that. It was actually a Game of Thrones, like, behind-the-scenes book, and, like, the prices in the back were pounds. Yeah. But I bought it cool. at a secondhand bookshop. Makes it so feel fancy now. Um, it's about this girl who works in London. She's a clairvoyant, and she says she can break into people's minds, and the government of London really don't like people that do that. And so she has to, like, hide, but I think she joins, perhaps, like, a resistance group. Ooh. I love a resistance group story because I'm a hoe for that stuff. You love a rise up story. I do love a good rise up story. A couple so more from me. I got The Geography of Lost Things by Jessica Brody. I like it because the cover is so pretty. It makes me feel like I'm walking down the woods. This is also, I believe, a road trip book with a guy and a girl who kind of fall in love but also do it to escape some complications they're having in their life. I know you don't like road trip books, but I am excited for this one. I also have The Roommate by Rosie Dannon, if I'm saying that right. Dannon. Um, first of all, hello. The cover screams romance. Look at all the hearts and the happy, sappy red and pink and everything going on in there. Um, basically, I believe the main female character is looking for a roommate. This guy kind of just pops up, but it's not who he says he was. So she's expecting someone else, but not him. And... I mean, I've, I love a good romance that starts with roommates. That's always fun for me. I'm also putting on the list Take a Hint, Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert. I believe this is part of a three-part series where each one takes a different girl and is, like, focusing on her. I believe they're all sisters. So Danny Brown, don't know much about it. She kind of falls in love. This was a <laughs> suggestion by Lindsay. Um, everybody and their mother is obsessed with it. I like it because it has my name in it. So the last two books that I will haul today, um, one of them is Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim. And this is has been described as Mulan meets Project Runway. Nothing more needs to be said. <laughs> um, and the cover is really cool. And then the last book is Woba to Moonlight by Isabella Banez. And I don't, this book, fantastic. There's a sloth on the cover. It's cute. It's pink. It's got little shiny things. Um, and it's about a girl who is a decoy for the Condesa, like, so like the, the, the ruler. She has to stand in for the Condesa when the Condesa is supposed to marry kind of the rival usurper who came in to try and like take over stuff. But the girl, uh, Zimena, has to go in her steed. And I think she's also being a spy. And so I just can't wait for this. <laughs> um, I've heard pretty good things about it. Um, and it's just so pretty. And my mom also got me this one for Christmas. So Ooh. thanks mom part two. <laughs> You're welcome, dear. Yes. Uh, so those were the books that we have hauled recently. There are so many. Um, and, uh, we hope you enjoy a very long <laughs> video about books. So thank you for watching. Uh, let us know which book you are most excited that we hauled, which one we should get to next. I think Danny should read, uh, Take a hint, Danny Brown, but that's just my personal word. Take a hint, Danny, last name. <laughs> Take a hint, Danny, do it. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, thanks again for watching, and we will see you guys in our next video. Bye!